gotta force it to come out. You're a genius. But what I say? No, 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 no. What's up, everyone, and welcome to a very special Blue Beetle review. We saw the movie. We're here to give thoughts. Yes, indeed. Butts were in the seats, popcorn in hand. Pizzas, too. Oh, yeah, we did. We, we have <laughs> we personal did. pizzas. Don't, listen, don't completely out our fat kid tendencies. Well, we, to be fair, we didn't have time to get dinner, so that was our that dinner. That was our dinner. It was, you know, popcorn and pizza. What a perfect combination. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get yelled at for, for saying fat kid tendencies, but I don't care. I'm a fat kid, so I can say it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the movie, Tim. People need to see it. You need to see this movie. Dude, I'm going to say it like this. Like, just start. Everybody who's who regularly watches and listens to the show, mm -hmm. you were the optimist on this movie. <laughs> I was the pessimist on this movie. Right. I am a beaten down soul when it comes to particularly DC films, but I would You're say straight super on film. beaten puppy. Yeah. So I went into this with extraordinarily low expectations. You know this very well. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm expecting nothing from, about this film. In fact, I'm expecting to come out of it not liking it. <laughs> uh, this was easily the most pleasant surprise of a, a popcorn superhero flick yeah. that we have seen in quite a while. I went in expecting, at best, it'll be like a Shang-Chi. Which but, was good. Which was a good movie, yeah. but it wasn't like great for me. It was good, not great. I left, when this movie ended, I was like, that was a blast. It would, it like, I, again, I thought it looked good from the first trailer. I've been excited. You know, from the beginning, I was like, yeah. I think this movie. Yeah, you were good. up on it. But even still, it exceeded my expectations. Like, this is one of the best superhero films that I think I've seen or, you know, at least personally enjoyed in a few years. Certainly since phase four and five of, you know, this new Marvel era. I would here. agree. Like, yeah. It's probably my favorite DCEU film. Well, everyone knows my love for one. I need, I don't want to say that I, definitively. I, I want to say, like, how are we going to categorize this? Because that's the thing. I don't want to say anything definitive right now because I've only seen it once. Well, I mean, in the DC sense again. of DCEU versus DCU. Well, because this that's the thing that's crazy about it's so shocking. We too. talked this about movie, this after the movie. Yeah. This movie was made before James Gunn came on board. Right. So even though he's taking it and incorporating this into the DCEU, this was not under his no. eye. This and was, this was, was under uh, Hamada, right? Is that a uh, Hamada? Yeah. Hamada and the old, the old DC regime. regime. So that made it more surprising. I'm like, yeah. how did they make this that good? Cause they've only like Wonder Woman was really good. They only had a handful. I would say probably around four to five, like solid films that unanimously everyone right. is like, yeah, these are good films. And this is probably the best of all those of all, like even the good ones. I agree. So that that's crazy. I mean, good for them. And smart. I happily, Oh, happy that they did that. I don't know how it happened if because the movie felt extraordinarily detached from everything that came before it. Which very super smart works. on their part. And I don't know if that was intentional in the sense of they saw a change coming mm -hmm. and they were like, hey, we need to make this a completely standalone film. So, somewhat similar to what they did with the first Shazam, but mm -hmm. more so because even the first Shazam, they referenced things that yeah, happened the in within there. the Snyderverse. I mean, Blue Beetle, to be fair, it's not really a spoiler because we're not going to spoil things right here. But they did mention Batman, Superman, and Flash. But it's like, you didn't see anything. It was just saying the characters exist. So right. we don't know what versions of those characters right. they're talking about. Right. And there's there's things on buildings that you see that reference mm -hmm. things within the DC universe. But nothing is overtly part of the previous films and, and so forth. Yeah. So, and, and, and yeah, I don't know if we said that out of the get. But this is going to be all spoiler free. Every, our entire talk here. Uh, we just want to give like our first thoughts on the film because both of us were so pleasantly surprised. Me, so me, why did I just turn into Jar Jar Banks? <laughs> Lisa called Jar Jar Banks. <laughs> uh, me, much more than you. But I was, I left there. There were certain th elements of it that I just was so. It was such a great surprise, but also it made the fun, the movie so fun. One of which, and this was the thing that hits you right up front, is that this movie has hints. If you're an '80s '90s kid, oh, all day. You are going to, you're just going to be smiling a it's lot. It's got like Stranger Thing vibes. Yes. Karate Kid vibes. Cobra which, Kai. Which is, which is not surprising, I the suppose. the star of the film. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Who, by the way, is fantastic. He's great. As, as Jaime Reyes, mm -hmm. Blue Beetle. In fact, I, I'll go further. In addition to the 80s, 90s vibe, which just gives it almost like a modern upgraded version of like a Karate Kid type uh, a story mm -hmm. and vibe, um, the entire cast was great. Yes. George Lopez. Joe Pil George, George Lopez as freaking Uncle Lopez Rudy. As Uncle Rudy, he protect him. 
Protect him <laughs> at all costs. Because that, that's another thing, like... Well, first and foremost, it, the film ended up being what I was telling you. And I think I said on the podcast before. Mm-hmm. This is basically DC Spider-Man. Without question. Because that's what Jaime Reyes is even in the comic books. And they freaking yeah, they nailed, nailed it. Freaking nailed it. Like, I know it'll never happen, but I want like the, like Jaime Reyes, uh, Blue Beetle to cross over with Tom Holland Spider-Man very badly. Oh, that, yeah. That I would mean, just be like, that'd be crazy. But, <laughs> but it, it very much had homecoming vibes. But better than but Homecoming. But like if, a, if Homecoming was say, like 80s, it was 90s. better than Homecoming. Oh, wow. That's saying so. Vulture was a better villain. Yeah, the vil- but overall. I don't, yeah, I don't want to go. But but yes. Certainly but funnier. But overall. That was one of the other pleasant surprises of this I'll film is how funny it was. Because obviously you got to judge a film whatever. by like how entertained you were throughout mm-hmm. the whole thing. For me, I had way more fun watching Blue Beetle than Homecoming. I like Homecoming. I'm not saying I don't like Homecoming. I, I really enjoy Homecoming. I just think Blue Beetle's better. Man, I don't know. I would have to think about that. But I mean, it's it's right there at the bare minimum. It, they're mm-hmm. right there. I mean, this movie, guys, listen, if we want, if we want these studios to make good films, if we want them to go and you know to present us with stuff that is fun and entertaining and is true to characters, personalities, mm-hmm. and comics, you know, with certain liberties taken, obviously, that are reasonable. But if we want them to do this, we have to support these movies when they hit. And right now it's looking like this movie is going to have a hard time at the box office. We need to get out as, a, as like in the nerd world, we need to get out and support this movie. Go see you know this what? movie. It what is a the, lot of fun. It's a, not, you're not going to, it's not going to win any Oscars. As a fellow Latino. Okay. All right. The director. <laughs> Wait, fellow to me? No, just me as, too. For the Blue Do Beetle, I get, you no, know what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm honorary Everyone, because my wife is Puerto Rican. That is true. It's in your, uh. obviously your kids are half Puerto Rican <laughs> as well because of that. So. As a fellow Latino, because we all know the Blue Beetle, he's Mexican, right, right, right. Latino and stuff like that, heavily in the film. And the director is actually Puerto Rican, like, mwah, yeah. over here. Yep. I am going to self-appoint myself as an ambassador for this film <laughs> and say, go see it. It is, it's just fun. Yeah. It is a fun superhero film. It's it's just a good time, good story. You care about the characters. The action is awesome. The, it's got comedy. It's got heart. Like, all the way. It. You know what the thing I was thinking too? It's been a while since I watched the superhero movie and I didn't have a lot of complaints with the third act. I'm not saying the movie's perfect. No, no, it is That's not perfect. perfect. But I would say, getting on a more technical level, it has one of the best third acts we've seen in a superhero movie in a while. Yeah, I, I would I would agree. I think this was, it, again, this movie is not perfect. Yeah, I don't want to no. make it sound yeah. like I'm saying yeah, this that this not movie inf- yeah, is not a perfect War. War. Yes. It's not like Winter Soldier. Yes, you th- you're going into this movie for a good time. Yes. This movie is just a fun. It's just refreshing. It's it's fun. It's great. The characters, are, the casting is great. The character development is very, very good. Mm-hmm. And the thing relatable, that I- Relatable, super relatable. So relatable. That's what makes a lot of the comedy work mm-hmm. is there's so much relatability. And you know, uh, the, the film is around a Mexican family, right? In the Mexican <laughs> culture, Mexican American culture. So right? good. And so there's, for me, because my wife is Puerto Rican and I really have grown up around- not just Hispanic friends mm-hmm. that were I was very close with, but also I my wife and I have been together since I was very young. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I grew up really around that. So a lot of, of that, course. but even in my family, there was relatable things to my family because my family's Italian, Italian Irish. Mm-hmm. And so there was things in there that even I, my mom did, who's Italian, yeah. that my mom did that I just made me laugh. It was just like, yeah, it's just really relatable stuff. Which is really cool because, you know, I obviously were relating because I am H- Hispanic, but it's cool to know that like, it's just- Univ- Like some of it was universal. It's just universal. Because yeah. a lot of people in the theater, you know, obviously there was Hispanic people in the theater as well, but there was a lot of people who weren't, who were just, everyone was laughing. Because it was just, yes. it's not one of those like, oh, only if you're Hispanic, you're gonna think it's funny. No, no. It's like, no, 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 no. I, sp- I would it's, say, especially if you funny. come from like a, a, like a like a low income to a you know lower middle Which class income. Which is most income. of America. Yeah, that's most of us. Yeah. Right? And if you come from that world, if you grew up in that world, especially in the 80s, 90s, like there's I'm, so I'm many gonna, relatable money that makes it really funny. I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to say one word and a lot of, you know, people oh, are going to know, know especially gonna Hispanics. Yeah. Vix, Vix, Vix Vapor, Vapor Rub. That's all I will say. <laughs> Vix Vapor Rub. You know, oh God, that part. Yeah, we can't spoil yeah, anything. Okay. Don't just, spoil anything. Just, there's just some really good, fun, funny moments. And again, this isn't like, this isn't per se a comedy. It's not an action movie. No, it it's is, a perfect it's amalgamation. A fun, yeah. And the the other element that I loved about this movie that it brought, it brought such a great, it was a hopeful film. 
Very hopeful. And it brought such a great sense of family, very similarly to the Spider-Verse movies. Mm -hmm. um, this, this movie really dives into the importance of family and, and loved ones and keeping them you, close and th that being your strength. It really leans into that. And it was, I think that was one of this movie's greatest strengths. You know, you know, to, to wrap up my, my thoughts here, I, I will say one of the reasons why I liked it so much is I don't remember specifically with superhero films, the last, I mean, there's been lots, but like in recent years, I haven't cared as much about characters as I did in this film. Like that was the thing that hit me most. Yeah. It's like when they did certain you things. You think kind of emotional there a couple of times. Well, it's a really heartfelt, like thing, yeah. again, we're not going to spoil, but a lot of things that happened, like it really hits home. It's very grounded. Yeah. Uh, and it just, it's a great superhero story. Yeah. It's kind of like, you're, it kind of goes back to the basics, but I think that's what you need. Like yeah. everything, like, you know, it's, a, it's set up like, you know, a love interest, boy gets girl, boy becomes a superhero. There, there's a loss or a tragedy. Boy, it takes that to like become the hero he needs to be and use it. It's just, it's done so well and it's relatable and you really care. And that's, I say that all the time. I've said that for years on this podcast and on Varian in general. It's like, if you don't care about the characters, nothing you're saying or doing matters. And this story made you, or the movie story as well, made you care about the characters. Without question. I, and again, I think that goes back to the writing was very good, but the casting was really good for this film. Every casting single, the board. every the single grandma. Across, yeah. Even the, Nana? The, even, oh, the, even the guy, I'm not sure if his name, I was trying to find his name. Um, I think it's Raul Max uh, Truijo. Uh, the villain? Played Carapax. Carapax, yep. Um, Susan Sarandon yeah. was good too. Tr Tr Susan Sarandon was great. Mm -hmm. uh, she's, I mean, she's a, that she's an actual yes. Academy Award winning. Yes, yeah, like Susan yeah, Sarandon. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> she, that wasn't surprising, but every single casting was perfect. The guy who played uh, Raul uh, Truijo, who plays uh, Carapax, genuinely intimidating. He's got a cool look. Very cool he look. looks awesome. Genuinely intimidating. So while he's not this huge aspect of the movie per se, mm -hmm. when he is there, he is a he is the properly intimidating force that you need to counterbalance this hero's uh, origin story. For sure. So, but everybody down the line, I was unsure about whether or not um uh do you know how to pronounce uh Maraduena's first name? The kid who uh, plays Blue uh, Beetle. Zolo, I believe. Is it Zolo? I believe it's Zolo. Okay. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure yeah, it's Zolo. Yeah, I'm not sure how to pronounce how he pronounced it. I don't want to flub it. But he, I wasn't sure how he's going to do, because I've seen Cobra Kai, but Cobra Kai is a little bit cheesy. It's yeah. kind of self-aware cheesy. It's supposed cheesy. to be, yeah. yeah. And he was fantastic. He's great. He was fantastic as Jaime Reyes. And I hope he blows up with yeah, this, because he did really, great. I really need good. to see more Blue Beetle. Because now mm -hmm. I just want to see him in it. Like, I can't. I want to see this Blue Beetle interact with like the new Superman and Batman. Yeah. So bad. And eventually meet Booster Gold. Oh my God. Ugh. He just, he does a really good job. <laughs> Very similarly to Tom Holland with Peter Parker. He does a really good job of that kind of innocent, you know, innocent, uh, good. good natured kid yes. who wants to do right, who wants to help and be there for his family. And there's things, there's more things thing I want to say, on him. but we can't, cause there's this one thing he really pushed, but it's kind of spoilery because it's a yeah. big point of the film and it comes around circle, but there's this thing. We'll talk about that in the spoiler, in the spoiler, po which, the spoiler podcast. But. Yeah, so look out for that on Monday. We're going to have a full spoiler breakdown of the movie on our Monday's podcast. So keep a lookout for that. But just overall guys, fun movie. What would you rank it at, at a one to 10? Uh, when I, you know, I'm kind of on a high right now. I will say that because mm -hmm. I really did enjoy mm -hmm. it. it. It exceeded my expectations. But as of now, with, you know, just thinking about it, I would give this eight and a half, nine out of ten. Oh, wow. No, I really, like, again, I'm not saying this is like the best superhero film ever made. Like mm -hmm. this is not Infinity War sure. or something of that caliber. Right. But it was so surprising. It's a new character. It's refreshing. And I really genuinely just had a lot. We were yeah. laughing. I don't remember the last time I even laughed at a comedy that much. Right. This isn't even a comedy. We were laughing quite a bit. So because of how much I enjoyed it, which is what you should base your ranking on a movie. That's true. I got to give right. it an eight and a half to a nine out of 10. Okay. Yeah. I would give, I would give this movie definitely a solid eight. For See, me, this yeah, was that, a solid. That's eight. a high score that's for you, too, score. especially for a DC film. Yeah. It, it, you you guys know I, I'm picky. <laughs> I am very picky. I'm a little more critical. Uh, on on films, but this was as you just said. You should be gauging it based on how much fun did you have at the, at the theater. Mm -hmm. And this was a blast of a movie. It is not perfect. It definitely has some cheese. It and has try some... to see it with the crowd this weekend because that kind of made it better. Where other people were laughing. Yes, and everyone's kind of you know that theater experience. Without question, everyone's just like, yeah, this is fun. Yeah, the, the community experience is always better. 
But definitely, I we both of us highly recommend go out and see this movie, it. support it, so we can get more of it because this Please. was a fun one. Yeah, let James Gunn and Peter Safran and everyone at DC Films know we want more of this. And the yeah. only way to do that, tell any business you want it, is by giving them your money. So go That's see that. the movie. Go see it. Yeah. But I guess that brings our spoiler-free thoughts to a close, Tim. That's it. And again, the spoiler version of this breakdown for Blue Beetle will be Monday on the podcast, so keep an eye out for that. So hopefully we'll see you next time when we talk spoiler Blue Beetle. 